Hey, hey, hey. Ringing the bell for boot camp. It's our closing ceremony. It's our closing session. Come on in and join me. So we pull all this energy in together from the week. Come on in. Listen to the bowls for a moment. Pulling your energy in. Come in and say hello. Give me some roses. Let me know how you're doing. We're going to talk a little bit today about the oracles, why we even want to work with them. And then we're just going to kind of close the energy. We've had a great week. I've thoroughly enjoyed working and teaching and being in the practice of working with our intuitive abilities, separating out our empath abilities as well. And I think everybody really learned a lot. Give me a thumbs up for that one if you learned something, something about your energy. And even if you're watching it on replay, give me a replay, even if you're watching it later. And give me a heart or give me a thumbs up if you have learned something about your own empathic nature this week, right? This whole past week. We've been doing it all week. We've been going strong. And now we really want to apply it, right? All right. Hey, Janet, how are you? Just having a conversation with two of my advanced students, how important it is to know our empathic energy. Now, we can keep it wide open. We can be addicted to being all over the place. We can. And that was a conversation we had. No, I like to be all over. I'd like to know all this. But yet... To come in and to feel distracted, unfocused, scattered, and not know what your energy is? Hello. Hello. So we can have all the tools available to us, but if we don't practice and we don't know that difference between being empathic, being intuitive, knowing our boundaries, and applying it into our everyday life, it doesn't help us. So this work is so important. It really is. It is so important. So we do continue. It continues in the intuitive path. 90-day class. We're going to just take this even further because part of it is the actual practice. That's what we need to do. The actual practice. We need to work with each other. We need to hold each other accountable. We need to continue working with the tools. Right? It's one thing just to kind of in theory, oh, I kind of know, I kind of think, but to actually do it and really own it. All right? I just was listening to two of my students. One was like, yes, this is what happened to me. I was like, I don't know. I love being open in my energy. No, you can be. And you can have the ability to also pull it in when you need it so that you can decipher the energy that is yours. All right? And that's really been our focus all week long. So it's been a really great time. I did want to offer just one more, and then, we cut, then we're going to just kind of close this down, and we start into the intuitive path. So the intuitive path is a 90-day program. We work in a smaller group. We work on Zoom, and we take this even further. The whole theme of the program all these next three months is intuition as a decision-making tool, knowing your hell yes, knowing when you're holding on to excess energy, knowing how to focus, how to manifest. And actually, I just gave my book away, but working with that happy pocket full of, mem of, of, happy pocket full of money. All right, manifesting abundance, especially in this time when everybody's like, oh, there's no money out there. Oh, I don't have the money to do this. No, there's so much abundance in the world. So that's our focus going to be. We're going to go back through this intuition, using even more tools, building the skills, and then we're going to work through how do we apply Reiki? How can Reiki magnify this? So whether or not you've been attuned to energy, if you're not, you will become, and if not, if you are, you're going to be really using the skills to do it and magnifying it even more. And then we're going to work like we did last night with the, the, with the tapping, getting rid of the doubt, getting rid of what gets in your way of doing the life that you want, how you can apply this. It doesn't mean you have to be like a Reiki healer. That's not what this is about. This is about your life, your purpose, and the kind of life you want to live. Everything is changing in the world, right? Everything is changing. So are we. So are you. How can you make your life, your business, the life you want to live? That's what we're going to focus on, all right? And then the fun part, once we get all these tools, I'm going to guide you to learn how to read your own Akashic Records, to go up there and work with Spirit to help you, guide you through all of this. It's going to be a really great program. All right. 
Come join. I still got a few spots open. So why do we... Got a heart on that. Thank you. All right. Why do we want to work with the oracles? Why? Are they just woo? No, they're not just woo. You can look at it that way, but okay, so what? What can the oracles help you with? I know for me, they give me confirmation of my life. They help me to find that depth of living, like, oh, there's that sign. It was from the card. This is direction I need. Yes, I'm in alignment. The more we work with the cards, the more we can practice keeping that vibration up high so we can manifest, we can make those commitments in our life. So when you feel like, gosh, I'm not quite sure, kind of like we were talking about a little bit, I actually just saw Summer's car, kind of like we saw a little bit like working with the pendulum. Like, okay, let's see, I wonder which way this would go for me. Like, should I do this or should I do this? And it's not like we ask yes or no questions, because what we want to do with the cards is we want to open up the energy. So when I have a yes or no question, I do drawings for this possibility, drawings for this possibility. And then I look at what comes up. Now the key is that you follow what comes up. So often we go, no, I don't want to do that. Let me do another reading. All right, so that's where you build the strength to be objective, to hear the messages, see the signs, know the feelings. We bring all of those clairs in. That's why we've been working through them all week. It's not why we just work with one and we dismiss the others. We want to bring all of that into presence, the situation. So when we draw a card, here and now, there we go. What a great card for us right now. When we draw a card, we can look at the signs, look at the colors. How does it make me feel? Where can I find this coming in for me? Here and now is being very present, right? Being in the energy of what exactly you need. It reminds me of like that just for today that we talk about. The card shows a, a direction to the past, a direction to the future, but inside right there, being very present in between the two. When we are present, we talked about this yesterday with all that, you know, the tapping coming into the present. We can make new decisions about our life that is in the present. We're not riddled with all that past, worried about the future, very present to make the decisions. So this reminds you, okay, maybe I am worrying a little bit too much about the future, the future. Or maybe I'm carrying all that stuff that happened to me yesterday. <sighs> cut the cords. We're going to be working with learning how to cut cords. Present. This is what I need to do right now. And so these are confirmations. Confirmations like, oh, yeah, right? Like how many birds did we see when we drew that? How many people saw many, many different birds, right? How many people saw that? And so it helps you to recognize where am I right now? Am I in my body or am I somewhere out there? Am I taking too much energy? Can I present my life? And that's exactly what the here and now card is. Be here. Be now. Chop wood. Carry water. Kind of similar in some ways. So you can become familiar with that for yourself. You can draw a card every day. Show me what I need to follow today. Show me what's blocking me. I do that one a lot Like because sometimes we can't see everything, right? And so this can give us clues about our life. Now, I go through phases. Sometimes I draw them all the time, and sometimes like, I don't even draw it. I love the one I had. I want to hold on to that energy. I want to stay in that, and that's really important, too. I was just talking about from the book we're going to be working with, The Happy Pocket Full of uh, Money, is that he talks about, we talked about this Saturday, holding that vision for an hour. Holding that vision of what you want so that's using all your senses to see it, to feel the elevated emotions, to hold that vision and you start to bring it in. But if we don't have the practice, we won't be able to do that. So the cards can give us the signs. It can give us the symbols to come back and reimagine. I kept thinking about that pelican all day. All right, all the extreme conditions that we live under right now, all the many things that we can, the hummingbird presence, and birds were all around. Beautiful blue. I have now a beautiful blue, uh, red, red bird in my backyard. It's so beautiful. So these are the reasons we use it. It can help us when we're feeling low. It can help us look at the energy of what's blocking. It can help us to confirm where we're going. It can give us the added ability to lift up our intuition, to lift up to the here and now, so that we can find the signs that are around us. All right, we all go through phases where we feel troubled. We just do. And like, I don't know, I feel confused. <sighs> Working with the tarot working with the oracles, whichever you choose, brings you into that present moment, helps you to slow down, 
helps you to look for the signs, and it reminds you to lift up your vision for what it is you're looking for, what it is you want to bring in. Then once you start to see that, then you lift up the elevated emotions and you listen for your signs, and then you know when you're in the energy for what you need right now. So much is changing in the world. You've heard me say this over and over. So much is changing in the world right now. Knowing who to trust is yourself. So that you can be aware of what that energy is when you go out into the world. So you can be sure when you walk into a room, right? Then you're going to know. So we do. We have so many tools out there that we can use, but it really is. It's practice, practice, practice. And I think the first thing in... What's what we started with right here in the boot camp was knowing whether you're an empath, knowing, well, I don't even think it was weather. I think it's what kind, right? Because everybody in the group was some kind of empath, right? So knowing what kind, then when we start to separate that out, we build those intuitive abilities, and the oracle cards can keep you, can keep you in that. So in the program, I kind of save these to the end, although we've already been doing a little work with it, so we'll probably bring it all the way through because it gives you another tool to use all of these skills with. So I find the more tools we have, the more we can use them and how they all just weave together. They really do, they all just weave together. So it's not like we have something over here and something over here. We wanna bring them all in so that we can be the master to our energy. That's what we wanna do, definitely. So some people ask me, well, what's interesting, the oracles and the tarot? I love the tarot. I started the tarot when I was really young. I put it aside. I got really, I got kind of afraid of the tarot, right? Sometimes that death card comes up. I'm like, oh, no, but it's not really a physical death. But if you don't know, you could be really afraid. But the tarot has more of a formation to it, whereas the oracles is depending on the, on the artist and what their purpose is. All right, I got a couple of thumbs up for that one. Whereas the tarot, it has your four suits, it has your count cards, it has your major arcana, and it has your minor arcana. So there are many different elements that you have to look at. You have to really know. Let's see what I dropped. Oh, I dropped the five of wands. All right, this is when everything feels like it's up in the air. This is about passions and desires and even spirituality. Five is change. Perfect card for where we are, right? So it's like, oh, okay, so the fact that I feel like everything up is in the air, universe is saying that that is what it is, and then you look at this card, and you see that there's actually, it's not total chaos. There is a little bit of rhythm to it, right? Look at the way the lines fall in. So it's okay. It reminds you, like, okay, you know what? Change is okay. And we all are in, are in chaos. That's what we talked about on the podcast this week. I interviewed a Vedic astrologer this week, a industry. We are talking about chaos right? But when we know that, we don't feel so crazy, right? Okay, then this is acceptable. Then what does that mean? It means I need to ground my energy. I need to pull that energy in, pull your boundaries in, become center, all right? We didn't do a whole lot of cord cutting, but we will in the intuitive path, cut the cords, send the energy back, feel my own energy. And yes, we can get all that information from a card, Definitely. So that is really why I love the cards. They're fun. There's so many bazillion decks out there. There really are. So finding one that you resonate is really important too. And again, that comes into intuition. You find a deck. You feel it. Does it feel good? Do I like the drawings? What do I think? Close your eyes. Presence the energy. Nah, it's not for me. Let me go find another one. Rather than just take the first one and go, okay, and not become aware. All right, so the awareness, the witnessing, all of that is very important, as we've talked about all week. We really have. So let me know how that resonates with you. If you have a question, put your question in. Let me know what it is. What deck would you recommend? And I recommend this deck. And actually, I'll tell you, if you go on to Hay House, they have a two-for-one. This is the this is Wisdom of the Oracles. Colette Baron reed she's one of my favorite right now. It's an oracle deck. And if you go on to hayhouse.com, they have a two-for-one, all right? Buy one, get one free, all right? I just got a bunch of stuff and sharing them with people, all right? This one will last you a long time. Her imagery is beautiful. And in the book, she gives you, like, for a regular message, she gives you if you want to ask about a relationship. She'll give you information about prosperity. And even if the card is upside down, what she calls a protection. So there's tons of room for you to grow into this deck. 
sometimes if we get them too simple, some of the angel cards, to me, you can kind of go through them really fast, right? But these you're going to grow into, and they're just beautiful. I've been learning a new tarot, which I haven't changed a tarot in a really long time. Yes, Leah took my tarot class. Yes, yes. We did the Wild Unknown, didn't we? I think we did the Wild Unknown. So I'm actually changing from the Wild Unknown, Leah. And Leah, congratulations, you came in. Yay, I'm so excited. We're going to really help you focus on your new business in this. We really are. So the the Good Tarot is also one of Colette Baron Reads. All right? And this is just hers. I find they're dreamy, they're uplifting, and I feel like they're very positive. Sometimes with the Wild Unknown, I remember when I first switched to that deck, I found that they were very, um, very direct. All right, very direct, and they helped me change my reading a little bit to be a little bit more direct. But right now, I feel like these are very beautiful, very uplifting, and it's kind of like I've been talking about on my podcast, like stepping into your brilliance, right? And I feel like this deck is doing that. So I'm going to learn it, and how do you learn a deck? One card at a time. One card at a time. That's what I do. I make notes. Hayhouse.com, I believe that's what it is. It might be um, Hay House Publishing. All right, Anne, I will look for that. Is that Anne? I don't know who that is. Um, can't tell who that is. It just asked the question. But I believe it is Hay House. Um, it might be just Hay House Publishing. Louise Hay. We all know who Louise Hay is, right? She's amazing. She almost gave up. Her whole empire almost fall, faltered. She was really big on um, public television, her and Wayne Dyer getting out there, and then everything turned around for her. She was like 90-something when she passed. Huge empire, definitely. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> excuse me, but she, they do, that right now they have books, I just got several of the um, <coughs> medical medium books on cleansing, I'm going to, Paul and I go do some cleansing, this crystal muse that Barbara's going to get, Barbara, you need to make a decision, all right, this is one of them I got on there too, Leah, the deck you're about to get, I did not forget, I'm going to send it, and you got a, you got a chakra stone set, I'm going to send you that too, I've got those I don't get out much anymore, so Thursdays is my day for running errands. So Thursday will be sent to you through the mail. Look, somebody posted that right there. So if you click on that link and go to it, and I think it's still up, but don't don't delay because it probably will come down. So yeah, buy one, get one free, and some of the prices are even slashed. It's incredible what they're doing. I don't know why, but maybe they need the work too, the business too. But definitely go on there and get a deck. I do love it. They do have Wisdom of the Oracles. The other one I love too I don't know if I have it right here, is the shaman cards. Those are really beautiful if you love the earth, all right? Another Colette Baron Reed, all right? She doesn't give me any royalties or anything. But that's another deck that's really beautiful, and I know that one's on there. She has a crystal deck. She has a goddess deck that's on there, too. I saw those as well. I have tons of decks, so it's like no more buying decks, right? It's like enough's enough, right? And that's the other thing, too, is a lot of people like to collect the decks, and then they'll find, and I did this, I am guilty that I have like 15 decks, but guess what I didn't do? Who can guess? The number one thing I talk about with all this work is practice. To sit down, do your meditation, one card at a time, and really get to feel how those cards feel for you. And that's how we learn. You take it one card at a time. How does this make me feel? Hmm, what are the colors I'm looking for? What does this mean? Because the thing is, the more you work with the deck, you love her goddess decks. Oh, yes. Okay, good. Yes, I haven't seen them. I didn't get them, but they are out there. Then you're kind of knowing. This is clean it up. I love it. Clean up your act, right? But then you know how they feel. And that's how I feel like with the tarot. They really resonate with me. I can tell the differences in the suits. And that's how I feel, the numerology. So there is, a, there is a system. There is a method to the madness of cards. There really is. Whereas oracles, you really have to know what they're made for. Like, what is her intentions? Like, you're going to get a different feeling from an oracle card like this, Wisdom of the Oracles, and you are from, like, a crystal card, right? Or from, like, the goddess cards. They're different. So it just really depends on the messages you want to see in your own life that can guide you. But I do recommend the Wisdom of the Oracles, the red deck, to start with. I really do. I think they're really beautiful. And I think they're a good way to grow into. And then you may find you have more of an affinity like I do for the tarot. I just love the tarot. I've been working with them for a long time. I've taken many classes. I started at, um, I think one of the first actual classes I took, besides just learning on my own, was at the um, Edgar Casey Center in New York City. So that was one of the first classes that I took with Mark Lyons. 
taken with Connie, Connie Barley, just like all different classes. And I just, I love to learn. I really do. And so I keep learning. And then when you learn a new deck, you learn even more. Yeah, for sure. All right. Questions? Let me know what other decks you guys like. I love to always hear about other decks. Yeah, I do. I really have so many. And that was one of the things. So I started to give some away and stuff and, and really just kind of hone in on a few decks. And I think that's important. And then we use all the tools. We run Reiki through it. We notice how we feel. We open up to an invocation. And so we put all of that in together. And that's how we really start to really access the energy for our higher good and for the things that we want to see show up in our lives. Confirmation, projection, right? A lot of people say, oh, it's too predictive. No, it's not. It's a projection of energy. You always have free will. You always have free will to make the choices. So what I always like to say, well, if you look at this or if you try this or if you go down this path, maybe these are the things that can happen, but you always have free will. In all of this work, you always have free will. You really do, right? We were talking about that. Leah was on the astrology uh, workshop I was on yesterday, too. We always have free will, all right? And we can go against it, or we can go through it, through it, or we can find the way to help us center our energy, right? Definitely, yeah. So I find it a really amazing tool. And I'll be honest, when I first moved back to Birmingham from New York, I didn't really tell anybody I was reading cards because already I was different, and I didn't really want people to think, oh, she's woo. So I did kind of keep it aside, and I do use it in all my readings. When people come in for their first session, that's what I do. I do a reading with them then. But I didn't really ever advertise it. Will we be able to replay this video? Every time I try to watch a live video, I'm not able to. Um, I probably will have this up for a little bit longer, but everything else is coming down. I've already uploaded it into the Intuitive Path online site. All of it's up there. Come in, Sarah. Come on. This will help you in your art. Come on. You could do it. I know you can. It's going to help you with your abundance. I'm a good one at helping to support people in the work that they're doing, right? I just got, oh my gosh. Anyway, it's another story. But yeah, Sarah, come on. Come on in. Everything will be there. I've already got everything up on the online site. We have videos. We have audios. We have all the materials. We're going to meet as a group. We're going to practice together. Medicine Woman Tarot Sweet Car, um, Oh, I don't know the Medicine Woman Tarot. That's nice. I like the Mother Peace. That was one of the first ones after I got so afraid. Someone gave me the Mother Peace cards. They're round. They're beautiful messages. And that was like when I turned 40. It was a birthday present. And that's kind of what put me back into working with Tarot. In fact, I found my workbook not too long ago. I found my workbook and brought it out. I was like amazed at all my notes. And actually, it was a guide when I started my jewelry because I work with the fire, earth, and water, natural forces. That's where my, all my work really started was with jewelry. And it was through the tarot because they have the four suits that my jewelry came about. And that's really kind of how I jumped back in. And then I went back because most of the classes, a lot of classes will let you learn on any deck, but sometimes they're definitive. And so I learned on the traditional Rider weight. And then I do compare... Although probably now as I learn the good tarot, I'll probably compare everything to the Wild Unknown because I've been reading from it for a couple of years. I think it's good to stick to a deck for a while. I do. I really do, especially the tarot because then you're going to learn it really well. Oracles, you can bounce around. And for a while, I was only using the good tarot when we had like a super full moon or something like that. But I, I've actually been thinking I might just go back into it and just really learn it for a while. We'll see. Depends on my time, of course. Because, again, it takes time to practice, to presence the energy, and to do the work. Which, again, everybody, again, I had an argument with one of my students tonight because he wasn't doing his work, although I love him dearly. <sighs> Got the point across that we need to do the work. We can talk about it all day long. But sitting down, doing the meditations like we did with the bonuses is what is really, really key. That's how you're going to know your energy, and that's how you're going to be able to apply this into your everyday life. Again, being an empath is not a bad thing. It has a lot of heart, a lot of compassion, a lot of caring. We definitely need that. But when it drains you of your energy, when you become all over the place, you can't focus, you can't decipher your energy, that's when it becomes a problem. But when we learn to master our energy, we can learn to set the intentions, put the energy out there, magnify your field of energy, create the abundance you want. Abundance can mean anything. Create the affluent life you want, let's say that. And then you just learn to magnify, attract. You create the lifestyle you want. And now everything is changing, so why not have the lifestyle that you want to do? 
All right. So I do want to say to everybody that's been joining me, thank you, thank you, thank you. I couldn't have done it with nobody here. So I'm very grateful to each of you. I will continue um, to be in the group, all right, because I love being in here. I will continue my Sunday night energy focuses. I will do that, although this Sunday night I'll be coming back from Nashville from a sweat lodge, so I'm not sure I'll make it this Sunday night. But I will continue, and I am going to start posting about the book we're going to be reading because I think it's so important for all of us to know that we can attract abundance into our life. There's plenty of abundance out there. It's just not in the right order right now. It's really not, but look around you. There's green, everything's growing. There's so much beauty out in the world, and it's abundant. So we can do that as well. All right, so from the bottom of my heart, I really want to thank each and every one. So let's just take a moment, pull all this energy in. All right, I've had a lot of energy going out, so this is what we do. We pull our energy in, take a nice, deep inhale, and exhale. And just taking a moment, and let's just offer gratitude. Gratitude is an ascending emotion. Gratitude for what we've learned about our own energy. Even if you only learned one thing, gratitude for all that you've learned. Gratitude for bringing this energy in, for being that much closer to mastering your energy. Take a nice deep inhale and exhale. Know that you can do this work. Know that it only takes practice to train the gifts that you have. Empaths are a blessing to this earth. Empaths have heart, they love, they care, but we must use the tools so that we aren't drained and aren't overwhelmed and aren't living in a state of confusion of not knowing our own energy. So thank you again for joining me. Super grateful. Super, super grateful. May your summer be filled with lots of love, lots of fun, lots of wild woman energy. Take the time to practice. We have extra time, extra sunlight. Take the time to sit in meditation and bring the awareness for your life into the forefront. All right. Thank you guys so much. Namaste. And the deck we were using the other night was from the Wild Unknown. Thanks, Kat. Kat, I'll read for you next week. Was from the Wild Unknown, Kim Kranz. It was her archetype decks. All right. It's a round deck. Kim Kranz, I think is her last name. K, I was looking to see if I had my book anywhere. K-R-A-N-I-S, I think. And it was the archetype. It was her newest deck from the Wild Unknown. If you Google the Wild Unknown, it'll come up. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Janet, from the bottom of my heart, too. Janet, come join us. Come join us in the group. All right. Let me know how you're doing. This I'll leave up for a couple of hours, but then I'm just going to pull everything down and clean the group and grateful again. All right, guys, have a great night. I'll see some of you tomorrow. Book uh, Intuition. The Intuitive Path starts tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Look for your emails. There will be a new Facebook group as well. You'll get an email with all that information. And many of you have bonuses. You'll get those as well. Super excited to continue this journey. Thanks again, y'all. Have a good one. To your